What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports through the mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to go through three envelopes that I'm going to share with you and we're going to jump right into these and see who I got. All right. The first envelope is postmarked from Denver, Colorado and it is indeed former major leaguer and current Seattle Mariners manager Scott Service on one, two, three, and four. Uh, I sent these to his home in the off season, so these were returned before spring training and before the season started. Um, outside of Denver, I want to say. So if you send to that address now, you're probably not going to see it back for quite a while because he's obviously a little busy being the manager of the Seattle Mariners. Now with that being said, um, he probably will sign care of the Mariners if he signs care of his home. Uh, if you recall from a previous video, and I will post that up here in the corner right here, uh, my 4th of July video special, I talked about my Team USA sets. These are actually two cards that I needed for both of those sets signed, so thank you very much, Mr. Service, for signing those for me. I really appreciate it. These will definitely go into that album with the rest of those Team USA cards. So, as you can see, Service was a collegiate player. He played, oh, roughly about 10 seasons in the majors. Um, worked his way up through the minor leagues after his collegiate career. career excuse me. Uh, he does not say where he went to college. It's not really helpful. Let's see here. Oh, Creighton. Okay. I did not know he was a Creighton Blue Jay. So he played for the Creighton Blue Jays as a catcher. Then uh, during his playing career, he played for the Houston Astros, which are depicted on this card. The Chicago Cubs for three seasons. The Giants for a season. The Rockies for a season. The Giants again for another season. So two years with the Giants. Excuse me. And the Houston Astros one last time. So a second go around. So... He played for one, two, three, four teams, but he had multiple stints with, with a couple of the teams. Now, most notably, for the younger viewers, this is the manager of the current Seattle Mariners. He's been at the helm as the Mariners manager since 2015. Uh, his managerial career record is almost right at 500. He's at 253 wins and 233 losses. So, I'm sorry, 2016 was his first year coaching as a manager. Uh, prior to that, it says he worked in the front office for the Texas Rangers and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim before he became a coach in the Mariner system, or a manager, I should say. So, thank you, Mr. Service. Uh, another key addition to my Team USA album in both of those sets. And uh, shout out to uh, Chase and Inc. for sharing that address and info because he, he posted a couple months ago that he got them. Alright, this next one, oh yeah, is from one of the best underrated players of the 90s in my opinion. You know how I like my hitters. <laughs> And that is former Milwaukee Brewer, B.J. Serhoff on one, two, three, and four. Now, B.J. Serhoff just isn't a Milwaukee Brewer, but that's where he spent the bulk of his career. He actually spent from 1987 to 1995 with the Brewers before going to the Baltimore Orioles in 1996 and spending time there until 2000. He then went to the Atlanta Braves for a couple seasons, 2000, 2002. And then he returned to the Baltimore Orioles um, to finish out his career from 2003 to 2005. He also, <coughs> excuse me, he also uh, is from the Maryland area. So it makes sense that he went home in his last couple seasons. Uh, he was an All-Star in 1999, 
He was on the 1984 Team USA team. I did not know that. I did not realize. Now that I think about it, I believe he is in the 85 top set. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not collecting that set sign, so I may or may not even have that card. But sure enough, very happy to get these signed. I really like these black and white heritages. They show up really nice with autographs on them. Uh, his brother uh, played, a uh, little known fact, uh, Rick Serhoff. Uh, he was a relief pitcher for the Phillies and the Rangers. Uh, his father actually played professional basketball. I was unaware of that. Dick Serhoff. Um, he is the uncle of Colin Moran of the Pirates. I did not know that. But Colin Moran is his nephew. And he had some uh, pretty, good, uh, pretty good seasons. He spent nearly, yeah, wow, a lot of his career was in Milwaukee. He was the first overall pick of the Brewers in 85. I did not know that. He was the number one overall pick. It says he played every position but, kept, or, but pitcher in his career. So he's played at every position on the field except for, except for pitcher. That's pretty cool. He's in the Orioles Hall of Fame. So, B.J. Serhoff. Um, you know, basically he played from 1987. That's his rookie card right here. Uh, all the way till about 2000, you know, the early 2000s. So he has a ton of cards out there. Um, I believe he still works in baseball in some capacity to this day for the Orioles. Um, I sent these care of his home during the off season, so if you were to probably write that address, I don't know if you're going to get him back during the baseball season. So you might want to wait till towards the end of the baseball season or next off season, you know, before you do decide to write him because it may be a long wait before you see him again. Um, I've heard of other autographers at minor league stadiums seeing him. You know, working in some capacity for probably the Orioles, I would guess. You know, doing some scouting or player development or something. So, thank you, Mr. Serhoff. I really appreciate that. All right, this next one is postmark from Connecticut. I think I know who it is. It's either a WNBA star. <laughs> it's not. It's a baseball player. And that is former Detroit Tiger. Slash St. Louis Cardinal Mike Laga on one, two, three, and a fourth. And again, I've said in many videos, I have a ton of Cardinal cards laying around from that purchase that I made with the Cubs and Cardinals cards. So I had those three in the box. I pulled that Tigers card out, and here he is. Thank you very much, Mr. Laga. So Mike Laga, one of the most famous things that he's known for and this is something that I knew about back when it happened was he is the only person to hit a ball out of Bush Stadium 2 the second Bush Stadium not the one that they play in now not the first one Sportsman's Park but Bush Stadium 2 that was built in 1966 until the Cardinals opened their current stadium in the early 2000s he hit the ball out of the stadium. He's the only player to ever have done that. Now here's the unique part. This happened September 15, 1986. It was a foul ball. <laughs> it wasn't even a home run. The guy hits the ball so hard somehow and then he doesn't even get credit for hitting it out as a home run. It's a foul ball of all things. So talk about ironic. Now a couple other ironic things with Mike Laga. He was not a very strong major league player. I'm not going to lie to you. He only appeared in, let's see, for a total of 188 games in the majors throughout his career. From 1982 to 1990, he was in the majors, parts of all those seasons. But he only appeared in 188. That's a, that's, that's a season and a half, basically, if you want to add it all together. Now, he was on the 1984 Detroit Tigers, 
but he didn't make the World Series roster. He was on the 1987 Cardinals team that went to the World Series that lost to the Twins, but again, wasn't on the roster. So despite playing for both of these teams in the World Series, he didn't get to actually play in the World Series. So he got to sit in the dugout. I guess one way of looking at it is what better seat they have in the house than right on the bench, I guess, in the clubhouse. So he, uh, after his 1990 season, um, after he left the Cardinals, he played for the Giants for a couple seasons in their minor league system being called up and down. And then he went and played in the Japanese Baseball League for the Fukuoka Dai Hawks. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> Am I saying that right? Yeah. In the Japanese Professional Nippon Baseball League. So, again, pretty cool that I got Mike Laga back. I never got his autograph before. But if you are a St. Louis Cardinal fan, this is one of the most unique autographs you can get. The only man... To hit a ball on a Bush Stadium too. Little known fact about Mike Laga, but something to be very proud of. It's just, like I said, his career is full of ir irony. I almost think of the Alanis Morissette song. <laughs> you know, isn't it ironic or ironic or whatever it's called. You know, this guy is there. He hits a ball out of Bush Stadium, but it's foul. He's on the 84 Tigers that wins the World Series. Still gets a ring, but never got to play in the World Series. He was on the 87 Cardinals. Still didn't get to play in the World Series. Now going back to his Tigers days, he batted almost over 500 in the month of September and still didn't get to make the playoff roster because it was like a September call-up and he wasn't on the playoff team. So, Mike Laga. We'll call him Mr. Ironic. You know, his his career full of irony. However, I would trade his I would trade my career in baseball for his in a minute, since I never had one. <laughs> so thank you, Mr. Laga. Thank you, Mr. Serhoff, one of the best hitters with over two thousand hits over his career. Very underrated player. One of the best Milwaukee Brewers, Baltimore Orioles to ever play the game. Great hitter. Also, thank you, Mr. Service, a very good player as well, but also a good manager. Hopefully you have better luck turning the Mariners around. It seems that the Mariners are on the upward slide instead of the downward slide like they were for a while. But thank you very much, all three of you guys, for signing. Thanks for joining me for another video of Through the Mail Thursdays. I hope you learned a little bit about some of these guys while watching this. I look forward to your comments below. Join me for another video next time.